Hello YouTube, this is Nixture258 here. Today I've got a video for you, of course, that's why you're here. And today's video is, uh, I built a binary edition module. Uh, yeah, this is not the final product. It's on the ways down that I can build the final product. But this is basically it. This is how it works. Inputs A and B. Whoops. Inputs A and B. Enter an XOR gate and an AND gate. This XOR gate enters an AND gate with a carry. This AND gate plus this AND gate enter an OR gate, which is basically this, and goes on to the carry. Now, the carry comes through here, goes to the XOR gate, and the answer of the XOR gate go through the, another XOR gate, and that comes out the first bit, blah, blah, blah. To prove that it works, I'm going to enter 1, and it says 1, and just to prove that the other side works, I'm going to enter 1, it says 1, and to prove 1 plus 1 works. There you go. Now, I was able to condense this. This is pretty wide. As you can see, it'll take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, by, I don't care how long, by 3, three high. This right here was a shrunken version of that. I was able to shrink it down to 6 tall, 3 wide, excluding the little extension here that will carry it onto the next module. And then it is uh, 12 long. I was able to shrink it some more. I was able to get it down to a total of 11 long, same height and width. Oh, and what's this? Even smaller. 10 long, same height and width. Then I was able to use and figured out that there's an integrated AND gate here. I made this AND gate smaller, made that AND gate smaller, but it's still the same height. It just looks a little better. Same length, too. Wait, yeah, it's smaller. But I was able to do this. I, I was able to get this AND gate and this AND gate. And then I realized, hey, isn't this right here also an AND gate? So through a bit of redstone trickery, I was able to get this. This is the final module. Yeah, that's right. Three by three by nine. Currently, it's 81 blocks, square meters. Prove that it works. One. One. One plus one. Three plus one. As you can see, there's a bit overlay between the two the two entries, but that's usually how these binary edition modules have it set up. Yeah. Incredibly small. And here it is lined up on a on a 8-bit uh, system. So I can enter one bit for every oops. I can enter one bit for every single one, and this will be the slowest calculation. I'm going to demonstrate the slowest calculation it'll have, which is however many this is, I don't care to count, plus one. So it'll take this long, boom. That's going to be the longest it'll take to calculate it. Likely not so. Now, I did take the, I did take the time, the one hour it took, to make a simple little contraption here. This is a numerical to binary calculator. Now let me just enter something simpler to make sure it's reset. I'm just going to do that. Okay. Let's do 4. Okay. Plus about 2 just to keep it simple. Seems legit. 6. Let's do, uh, how about this? 9. Plus nine. Well, look at that. Sixteen and four. Eighteen. Okay. As you can see, it all works. It's all functionable. And yes, so I've built this. I completely designed that. So therefore, this is a completely original design, not based on anything else other than the XOR gates. But those are the same, basically. This is the simplest XOR gate, and either way, 
I kind of designed my own XOR gate here. I want to get it smaller. So yeah, small, 4-bit, or any bit you ever want it to be, stackable, binary, addition module. Over here, I have the thing laid out. The little discussion, I guess, of how we could put it. Okay, this is input A, input B. Over here is the carry in. Over here is the carry out. And this is the sum. Okay, now, first of all, this is the XOR gate. The outputs of the XOR gate is here and here. Then it goes to the inverters, which are a part of the XOR gate. And this is the sum of the XOR gate. But this goes to the repeater, which then goes here and then into this block that I'm standing on, which you can't see it, but barely can see it, but it's a lit torch. Okay, you might be wondering why this button is here. There's a quick little trick my friend taught me. If you ever have a situation where it's like this, and it's powering this block and you don't want it to, you want not, not to power that block, place a button, it redirects it. If I didn't have that there, it would immediately burn out the torch, and it would mess up the whole, it mess up the whole thing. It just would not work. As you can see. Now the torch is burnt out. Okay. Put a button there. Fixes everything. Okay, that's it for the first half. Now, this is supposed to enter this right here, the XOR gate, right? Now, this is how it does it. It goes right here, enters the XOR gate. Now, what else enters the XOR gate? The carry-in, which is right here. The hardest part about this was integrating the carry-in. As you can see on this design, the AND gate came from the first AND gate, and the other AND gate from the carry-in and the XOR gate sum with the OR gate. This is the first XOR gate. This is the carry-in. And this, as you can see, that enters into there. That's the XOR gate's entry into the AND gate, which is actually right here. It's integrated within the XOR gate. This is here. The repeater's facing this way. Right here is the simple OR gate. Now it goes around, goes up a block, goes around here, powers this, which would power the repeater, into the carry out, which would be have a torch right there. But as you can see, I don't want to. Okay, so I suppose that calls for enough demonstration of how this thing works. I will soon have a either an instructional of how to build this, or I will list make your schematic file, but currently I have been having issues with uh, MC Edit, and it's not going to be that easy for me to do that. But as of now, this has been Nextra258, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.